It's Mark from Ripple Training. So the past several weeks, we've been exploring how to use Photoshop's generative AI in combination with Final Cut Pro so that editors can easily do some interesting things by augmenting their videos through in-painting or out-painting, adding different still content into those videos to create something new. Well, last week, Intelligent Assistants introduced a new app called Picture This, and you can't do the in-painting, out-painting thing with it but you can use it to create stills to add them to specific locations in your timeline right where you need them and to create multiple versions bundled up inside an audition. It's a very cool, interesting concept, has some pretty high requirements, but I think it's worth checking out because it's kind of where things are going and it's one step closer to integrating these AI capabilities directly into Final Cut Pro. So the app is called Picture This. You can get it on the App Store. You can just look up Picture This to locate it. Or you can look up Intelligent Assistants to look at all of their different apps, which are generally fantastic, in my opinion. So this app, a couple things you need to know about it. Number one, it's a fairly large download. It's about six and a half gigs. And that's because it's a completely self-contained app that contains the Stable Diffusion model for generating the image. In fact, it contains two models, one for generating images and one for up those images. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but that's why it's big. The second thing you need to know is the system requirements. You're going to need an Apple Silicon Mac, like an M1 or M2, and you're going to need to be running the Sonoma OS. And that's because you're running these models locally and they're big and they take a lot of processing to work. Even if you don't have a machine that meets those specs, I think you're going to want to check out how this works because this is where things are going and it's worth knowing about. The cost of the app is about 30 bucks. It's introductory pricing as you can see here until the end of October. You also notice there's an update here. I did some testing over the weekend and I found an issue which they fixed immediately and put out a new version which is part of the reason I love this company because their customer support is fantastic. All right, so that's what it looks like in the App Store. When you launch the app, you just get this single simple window. Keep on top is on by default. And let's leave that on for now. It's very easy to use, but there's a couple things that I think would be very helpful for you to know. Let's go to Final Cut Pro. So here in Final Cut Pro, I have a fairly complex project. You can see it's about 24 minutes long. It's got multicam clips. It's got titles. It's got connected clips and a bunch of markers. You can see chapter markers, completed to do markers, and regular markers. That's important because markers is how we're going to generate images with a specific marker type. I'm going to use Command Plus to zoom in on this portion of the timeline. And let's say for this particular portion of this project, I really need a close-up shot of some tortillas. There's a cooking show happening here, a little cooking demonstration, and I don't have a close-up. So I would love a shot of some tortillas, but I don't have it. In fact, I have a B-roll collection here and I could look through it and realize, oh my God, I never even got that shot that I needed of those tortillas. What am I gonna do? Well, one option of course is to get a stock photo. Go to a stock photo site, look through a bunch of stock photos, try to find something and buy it. But, but here's where this app really comes in handy. So I'd like that shot of the tortilla to be right here. I'm gonna press M twice, once to add a marker and the second time to open it. And I'm just gonna type in what I wanna see here now, prompting for AI-generated images is an entire kind of science in of itself, maybe more art than science of trying to figure out what to say to get the right image. But I'm going to keep things fairly simple here. I'm just going to say a stack of tortillas. So that's what I want to see here. The key thing is to make this a to-do marker by clicking right here. You make sure it's not a completed to-do marker, but just a to-do marker. It'll be red. Notice in the timeline index, which I have opened by clicking here, and I've selected tags, and I've also selected just to-do markers here, incomplete to-dos, and it's the only one in the project. That's why this is important. If you have a bunch of other open to-dos because you've been using these markers to identify fixes you need to do or something like that, all of those are going to generate images. So it's an important thing to check before putting this thing to picture this. So we've got one but we can have more. So I have a marker over here 
where they're talking about chilies, and let's say I have the same issue. So you can see I've added the marker just so I didn't have to type this in. I added a little bit more descriptive text here, Guatemalan farmer with fresh picked chilies outside on a sunny day. I'll change that to a to-do, an incomplete to-do marker, done. Now I can see in my timeline index the two different incomplete to-do markers which will generate images. So at this point, we're set to go. What I need to do is locate this particular project in the browser. So I could look at the name and I could look through the browser and try to find it, match it up. But the easy way to do this is go to the file menu and choose reveal project in browser. And that will make sure that we've got the right project identified. From here, I'm gonna drag that project into the picture of this UI. That will automatically export XML. And now, in this app, we can see the name of each of our markers, and these are the images that it will generate. By default, it's gonna create three images for each marker and put them into an audition. You can choose the quality level, and I would say most of the time, faster is really all you need. It takes roughly, in my experience, on an M1 MacBook Pro, about one minute per image. You can create images faster if you go directly to Stable Diffusion, DALI 3, Mid Journey, and use one of the interfaces to generate them. That is faster. However, the nice thing about this is we've got all our markers batch exported and it can generate these things. And you don't need to worry about figuring out the interface for each of these AI generated models. You can just let it do its thing and you can keep working and you don't need internet access. So if you're somewhere off the grid, this is a great solution. So I'm gonna click Start, and it will take a minute to kick this off. The important thing to know is I can go back and work in Final Cut Pro now and do whatever I want. This can just run in the background, but I probably don't want to make any edits to this current project because this app is gonna send back to me a new copy of this project with these auditions inside it. So if I do make changes to my current project and I want these auditions in my change project, I then need to copy paste them into the changes I made. Long way of saying, probably better not to make any additional edits to your current project until this is done, but you can work on anything else. And we'll come back when this is complete. Okay, you can see it popped up this window. I just wanna show you that took about six minutes for these six images, three images for each marker on the fastest setting. It's asking me what library I want to put this new event that will contain the project into. And this is why I purposely had a bunch of open libraries. If you do, you'll need to select where it needs to go, which in this case is right here. So I'll click Choose. It then imports the XML and will create a brand new event in that selected library. We no longer need to keep this on top, so I'm going to hit that toggle and then go to straight to Final Cut Pro. And we can see it's created and selected a brand new event with today's date. And notice it's added plus generated images to the project name. So this project is different than the one that we were working on down here, which is why I suggested that you don't continue editing in this project. Let's open this new project. If we look in the timeline index, we don't see any incomplete to-do markers. That's because it automatically switched those markers to completed once it created those images. So if you have a long project like this, it might be difficult to find them. I know they're right about here, but just to show you what we could do is switch to completed markers and look, for instance, for the word chili. Uh, there it is right there. Okay, and I can jump to that and then I know where I am. So an easy way to find it if you've got a bunch of to-do markers that are completed like I do. So let's start with these tortillas here. Remember I said there were two models in here. One generates the images and one upreses the images. This is a 1920 by 1080 project. To show you, I'll select it in the browser and you can see right here in the inspector, it's 1920 by 1080. If I select this audition and go to the info inspector, you can see it's 3840 by 3840. So these images are always scaled up to double the width of the original project size, and they're also square, which is then interesting from how we work with them. So here's what I suggest. First of all, let's look at our different options. You can either click the little audition badge here, and then you can tap your left and right arrow keys to go between the different options, or without opening that little window, you can just use a keyboard shortcut, control option, 
and either left or right arrow to cycle through them. So that one, not so great. That one's pretty cool. I like that one too. So let's say I like this one. By default, if I press Control D, we can see the duration is about two seconds long, and it may be it just made it long enough to get to the next edit point. So I can change the duration as long as short as, as I need. But the other thing is, if I go to the video inspector, notice the spatial conform has been set to fill. So it completely fills the screen. I'm gonna select fit instead for two reasons. One is that I get to see the entire image. So now I can look through my choices and select fit for each of those. It would be nice if you could do it for all of them at once. But that way I can see the entire image. And I kind of like that one because it's got the board there. And the other thing I can do is now that it's set to fit is I can use Ken Burns. So I'll select the crop tool. I'll select Ken Burns. And then I'll reverse that initial move. So we've got a little move on that there. I'll click done. And there we go. I'll make this a little longer and play that back. Fantastic. So I didn't need to go search through stock photo sites. This is totally free once you've purchased the app. There's no additional subscription and there's no charge to generate these images. The images are not copyrightable, so you can use them pretty much anywhere you want. And it works great. Now, a couple things to know about this is, let's say this is the image I want. And you might think, well, I want to finalize it. So if I right click on this and choose Audition Finalize, I get a warning that it's going to move media to, to the trash. And that's because currently this audition doesn't exist in the browser. So it's going to delete those other two images that were part of it. So I'm going to cancel this. I'll need to cancel twice because there's two other images it was going to delete. Instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is right click on this and choose reveal in browser. And that will then force it into the browser. You could now finalize it and you'd be fine, but I want to take this one step further. I'm going to right click on the browser version and choose Reveal in Finder because that's going to show me all three of those individual images. It will also show me all three of the other one I created as well. So while we're here, I'll drag them all into this event. And now I have access to those individual images that I can use anywhere else. Let's take a look at our second one. Once again, to really look at it, I'm going to choose Fit, Control Option Right Arrow, Fit, Control Option Right Arrow, Fit. So we can see the entire image. And I purposely left the quality at faster here. And I purposely chose a person because it doesn't always do a good a job as with people on a faster setting. You can see it looks distorted and kind of AI-like. It just doesn't look accurate at all for many of these. This one's pretty good. And that one's okay if I didn't include his face. So maybe what I could do here for this one is I'll use this version. I'll use Ken Burns. But as a start, since I'm focused on the chilies, I'll just start from here and I'll pan down to these chilies here. And this is where you may want to generate new images by sending this back to the picture of this app and using a higher quality setting to see what you get. I did do another test with the slider all the way to better and they came out in 12 minutes and the shots are a bit better. I'll click done. I'll increase the duration of this a little bit and play it back. So this image isn't great. I'd probably want to do this again. So you can get some great images. You can get some okay images. It really depends on the content, your prompt, how detailed your prompt is, and then just the quality of the stable diffusion model. But you can see how quickly you can batch produce images for your timeline directly in the timeline at the location that you want with multiple options to work with. So one thing to remember about this is like this is the worst it's ever going to be. All this stuff is just going to get better and better. And it's a little scary for sure, but very interesting. We'd love to know your thoughts. Please leave us a comment below. Subscribe if you like our content. And we'll see you next time.